all my nursing brothers and sisters. I hope that you're all having a wonderful day. Today, we're gonna to continue with the ATIT science review portion of the exam and start discussing genetics. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and better yet, hit that bell notification. It lets you know when I post new content here on YouTube. And give this video a big thumbs up. That way other people are looking for the ATIT's review videos know that this is a good video to help you pass it like a boss. Questions related to genetics covers topics including chromosomes, gene alleles, phenotypes, and genotypes. Some questions may also test your knowledge on the use of the Punnett squares. Let's get started understanding how the genetics are important on the ATITs. Genetics is a discipline in biology wherein scientists focus on heredity. Whereas biology deals with individuals and groups, genetic deals with the heredity information carried in DNA. The chromosome is a fundamental unit of genetics. Contained in the nucleus of a plant and animal cells, a chromosome is a linear strand that carries the hereditary information of an individual. It is composed of DNA and related proteins. Humans, for example, have 46 chromosomes, 23 from their mother through the egg cell and 23 from their father carried in the sperm. All organisms that procreate through sexual reproduction are diploid, meaning that they carry two sets of chromosomes. The two strands are connected by a single centromere and are referred to as chromatids. The number of chromosomes differ between species and there is no correlation between the number of chromosomes in a species and the number of genes. The gene is a core unit of genetics. It contains the hereditary information that singularly or through a particular grouping of genes leads to a characteristic. A characteristic or trait may be physical such as eye color or left-handedness or it may be behavioral or psychological, such as a predisposition to addictive behaviors. Genes are located in a particular position on the chromosome. They are on the loci of mutation, which leads to genetic variation. Mutations occur randomly and through environmental agencies. An allele is a version of a gene. A gene can be composed of a pair of alleles that call for a different distinct trait. In diploid organisms, there are two alleles, one from each other. The alleles meet at a locus. For any pairing of alleles, we can talk about the individual's genes being homozygous or heterozygous. If the alleles are identical, the gene is homozygous. The characteristic that the gene produces will be the same as in both parents. When the allele from each parent is different, the gene is heterozygous. Some traits are dominant and some traits are recessive. The dominant trait is the one that will be expressed in the offspring. Understanding phenotypes and genotypes. Genetic variation takes place at a cellular level, but it can be seen on the surface of an individual. We can view the individual's hair color, height, or hear his or her tone of voice. These observable characteristics are known as phenotypes. Some traits like blood type are not observable to the naked eye, but they are measurable, so they fall under the phenotype rubric. This includes those traits selected through heredity and influenced by environment. An individual's height, for example, is a product of its genes. But growing up in a poor environment with a lack of nutrition can lead to a stunting of growth. The observable height of an adult individual is part of it's phenotype. Phenotypes are the physical characteristics. The genotype of an individual refers to the genetic makeup in its chromosomes. An individual may carry a recessive gene for a trait that does not appear in its phenotype, but is still present and can be handed down to its genetic heirs. Although an individual's height may be inhibited by its environment, its heirs still carry the genotype for a range of height. This is not to be confused with a genome. A genome refers to an entire genetic material of an individual. In a human's case, all 46 chromosomes together. Genotype can refer to a specific allele. 
We can talk about an individual's genotype carrying DNA for both blue eyes and brown eyes. At the phenotype level, the individual has brown eyes because the trait is dominant. An easy way to remember genotypes is genotypes are the genetic makeup. Many have called Gregor Mendel, a German monk who lived in the middle of the 19th century, the father of genetics. At the time, evolution was largely thought to work along Lamarckian lines through traits being influenced by the environment. Mendel, through careful observation and experimentation, proved that heredity was instead a work. On an individual level, traits depended solely on the genes of the mother and the father. His work with pea plants led him to notice a mathematical distribution of traits among offspring allowing him to codify the laws of inheritance. He discovered that the same traits are also recessive, while others are dominant. He showed this by crossbreeding pea plants that varied in certain characteristics from height, color, and seed shape. By tracking appearance of phenotype traits in the offspring, he developed a set of predictions known as Mendel's Law of Heredity. The English geneticist Reginald Punnett created a diagram for predicting the outcomes in crossbreeding genotypes. The Punnett square is used to show how the genes of one parent, that is the genes that are already known, might combine in their offspring. It is a simple box of four squares. The alleles of one parent are placed along the top and the alleles of the other parent are placed along the side. The four boxes show all the possible distribution of alleles in offspring, first filial generation or F1, of the two homozygous parents, parental generation or P. In the Punnett square, there is a 100% chance that the offspring will exhibit a dominant gene becoming a tall P plant. In the following Punnett square to my left, between two heterozygous parents with one dominant and one a recessive allele, the offspring are shown to have a 25% chance of exhibiting the recessive gene. With a homozygous parent with two recessive alleles and a parent with heterozygous alleles are crossed, the results are shown below. Even though the recessive alleles represent 75% of the genetic material, the dominant gene will be represented in the phenotype 50% of the time. This demonstrates the difference between an organism's genotype and phenotype. Mendel's first law relates to the monohybrid inheritance and is also known as the law of segregation. This law predicts the inheritance of a single trait. Punnett squares are useful tools for calculating the outcomes of crossbreeding. In a typical monohybrid cross, we only record one trait. Let's look at eye color for an example. Both parents are homozygous, which means that they have both genes the same. One parent has the dominant trait and one parent has the recessive trait. In this case, brown eyes are dominant and blue eyes are recessive. So one parent is capital B, capital B, and the other parent is lowercase b, lowercase b. Since both parents denote only one gene to the offspring, there is only one possible combination result for the first generation of offspring, one dominant and one recessive gene, capital B, lowercase b. This means that the F1 generation is heterozygous, but the phenotype is the dominant brown eye color. The first generation is then self-crossed to produce the second generation, F2. For this generation, a Punnett square becomes useful for tracking the combinations. The parents are both capital B and lowercase b. They both have a dominant and recessive gene. And the offspring are capital B, capital B, capital B, lowercase b, capital B, lowercase b, and lowercase b, lowercase b. The monohybrid ratios of the phenotype here are 3 to 1. Mendel's second law relates to the dihybrid inheritance and is also known as the law of independent assortment. This law predicts the simultaneous inheritance of two separate and independent traits. Let's look at eye color, brown or blue, and thumb shape, straight and curved. The parent generation begins with one parent homozygous for dominant both traits and one parent homozygous recessive for both traits. We'll we use capital B, capital B, capital T, capital T for brown eyes and straight thumbs 
and lowercase b, lowercase b, lowercase t, lowercase t for blue eyes and curved thumbs. The F1 generation will inherit capital B, capital T from one parent and lowercase b and lowercase t from the other and will get capital B, lowercase b, capital T, lowercase t, which will result in brown eyes and straight thumbs. Gamets from the F1 generation can have both capital B, capital T, capital B, lowercase t, lowercase b, capital T, and lowercase b and lowercase t genotypes. As we discussed in the previous example, when the F1 generation is self-crossed, we get the Punnett square shown below. Looking at the Punnett square, we can count nine outcomes in which both capital B and capital T are dominant. There are three outcomes with capital B dominant and lowercase t recessive. There are three outcomes when a lowercase b recessive and capital T dominant. And there is only one outcome with both lowercase b and lowercase t recessive. This means a dihybrid cross has a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 phenotype ratio. There are also non-Mendelian inheritance that do not follow the 3 to 1 or the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio due to co-compliance in complete dominant recessive relationships, multiple alleles, or epitasis. I hope that this video has helped for you to pass your ATITs like a boss the first time. If you haven't done so already, I want to invite you over to my website at www.nursechung.com. There, there's additional resources for you to help you pass this exam. We've got practice questions as well as PDFs of the PowerPoints that I show in these videos. If you haven't done so, make sure that you follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye!